All right, welcome to The Witness. This is one of my favorite puzzle games. And this is a game that um, I wanted to play, but I just didn't feel like it would work well on stream. So I decided to make a, um, a YouTube exclusive so I'm not talking with an audience and kind of, I think, taking away from the feeling of this game and just to make it a little bit more quiet and intimate. So uh, I'm not going to be using a loud voice or being fucking nutty or anything like that. It's just going to be just you and me. Just you and me. We're just hanging out. We're just hanging out together. Um, so this game gives you very few sets of instructions. This is how it starts, by the way. There's no title screen. Um, and the first set of instructions it gives you is just movement. And then it tells you click, click here, and then you can move to the end, and then click again. So this right here is the foundation of every puzzle in the game. And right there we have entered the world of the witness. Um, there's so many things I could say about this game, but I'm going to kind of take the time to just kind of treat it as if we were playing it for the first time as natural progression would follow. But one thing I just want to note right off the bat is just like the, the placing of things in this game, like right off the bat, the first thing we see when we come in here is that mountaintop, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. And it's just framed so perfectly just right there. That's the kind of the focal point of the whole game and it just shows you that right when you come into it like it's genius so we're in this little kind of garden area and we have another puzzle right in front of us so let's do it so it's three a little bit more complicated but the idea remains the same and we have a lit up cable so let's go ahead and follow that here we go And there we go. We have another little cable. And this one's really complicated, but again, the idea remains the same here. And now we see a latch is opened here. We have two more latches to do. We've got these black cables. Let's go ahead and start following these guys. So here we have two entrances and one of them ain't gonna work. Another thing you'll probably learn if you play this is you can't cross your own line. So you can't cross those spaces in the line and you can't cross your own line. And there is another latch. And we had one more black cable which comes through here and up over that wall. So we need to keep moving this way. So this one has two cables that lead out. One to the door and one out this window. Uh, we don't know where the one in the window goes, but we know we need to get out of here, so we're going to do that. So we're going to skip that exit and go down here. So now we're free to explore further. However, we do have the situation with that cable going up out of the window. Now that we have the door open, we can go ahead and um, use the other exit. And 
And we heard something else happen over there. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we have reached the outside area. And now it tells us we can press shift to run. But for the most part, when we're going through a new area, I'm not going to do that because I want you guys to be able to kind of see this world. It's so pretty. So if this game gives you feelings of mist, it should because this game was heavily um, inspired by mist. So we have different parts of the island that have different... Um, themes and stuff. So we have like a jungle island over here. Of course, we have the mountaintop with the little tower there. We have kind of a city or a little town here in the middle. We have a little lake, of course. We have a section that's kind of like red and orange trees. And over here we have a little offshoot island. So yeah, there's just, you know, and there's even stuff we can't see. There's even a desert part. So if we continue down this path, we're going to find this door that we're not going to be able to open. Um, I mean, yeah, I could open it, but, you know, we're going through this game with a kind of a natural progression. We haven't learned these rules yet. We've got these black squares, we've got these white squares, we've got these black dots. We've got four different starting points and three exits. And it's a little bit too complicated for us right now, so we're just going to leave that for now and continue on our merry way. We come here, and we see a little shed with some puzzles, and we see this area over here with some puzzles. So let's go ahead and tackle these and see what this can show us. So this is where we train for the black dots and red dots. So let's go over here. Okay, so that seems to work. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. That does work. So looking at these two examples here, um, you can obviously see that black squares and white squares don't like to share the same space together because uh, I guess the world of the witness is racist. And then we have this situation. So this will work, but like I said, what's, what's great about this game is you don't necessarily know why things work right off the bat. You need to kind of experiment. So yes, that works. But does this work? Yes, that also works too. So black squares don't all have to be in the same space, they just can't share space with white squares. So knowing that, that works. But also, well, it can't go that way. Well, well, we'll find better examples. So that works. That works. That works. So in this case, um, we're going to learn a new rule in this set here. So we're going to section off these. And then we can section off this one. That works. And then we're going to see that same puzzle a few times, but it's going to show us how to do it different ways. There you go. And then right behind here, we're going to find our first audio cassette log. Now, these are littered everywhere. A lot of them are hidden, but we'll hopefully find them all. And there isn't a plot in this game per se, but what it, what this game basically is is kind of a vehicle for ideas. Um, the game itself kind of plays a little bit like the scientific method, I feel. And these audio logs are basically just um, quotes from... Um, renowned people in the fields of science and mathematics and philosophy. And the game is not designed to persuade you one or the other. There's philosophical views toward God, against God, um, things like that. It's just supposed to make you think. You know, it's just a thinking game. It's just supposed to make you kind of observe the world around you. This whole game is about observation. So let's go ahead and I'll shut up and we'll listen to the first one. The physicist Wolfgang Pauli once spoke of two limiting conceptions, both of which have been extraordinarily fruitful in the history of human thought, although no genuine reality corresponds. Sorry, one quick thing. Let's go ahead and turn on subtitles. That would be useful, wouldn't it? Just in case you're listening to this quietly. All right. 
The physicist Wolfgang Pauli once spoke of two limiting conceptions, both of which have been extraordinarily fruitful in the history of human thought, although no genuine reality corresponds to them. At one extreme is the idea of an objective world, pursuing its regular course in space and time independently of any kind of observing subject. This has been the guiding image of modern science. At the other extreme is the idea of a subject, mystically experiencing the unity of the world and no longer confronted by an object or by any objective world. This has been the guiding image of Asian mysticism. Our thinking moves somewhere in the middle, between these two limiting conceptions. We should maintain the tension resulting from these two opposites. Werner Heisenberg, 1974. All right. Now let's go ahead and move on into the shed here and learn a new set of rules. And again, I always like to start off by going, nope. So in this instance, let's try collecting both of those dots. And hey, it works. So basically just collect the dots. That's what we need to do. stupid I must be looking at something totally wrong there we go this game will make you feel like an idiot sometimes all right so now we've got two different entrances um, this one we won't be able to get because we wouldn't be able to come down here and come back up so there we go. And three exits. So I'm going to guess there we go. So now we've learned the rules for the squares and the dots, which means we have the knowledge to solve this one over here on the door. Okay, so this is the first puzzle that kind of involves some critical thinking. So let's go ahead and eliminate the possibilities for where we're gonna start this puzzle. We know we can't do this one because we wouldn't be able to collect these two dots because remember we can't go back this way onto our own line. So that one's a no. We also can't do this one because we can collect the dot but we wouldn't be able to separate the black and white square fully because we can't go through here. So that one's a no. Same thing with this situation. We couldn't section off the black squares from the white ones, which leaves this one here. Um, so let's go ahead and start tracing the dots here, and we'll start making space in here for the white squares while making sure that the black squares remain separated. So those black squares are separated. We'll separate that one. So you can kind of see in the middle of the puzzle, it's just white squares right now. So I'll collect this dot. Actually, you know what I'll do? I will come this way and section off that black square, collect these dots, come over here, section off those black squares, and there we go. So in the middle of the puzzle is just white squares. And a cool little Easter egg here, that tree branch through the window. If you line it up just like that with the cloud, it looks like a tree. There's so many things like that in this game. I'll try to point them out when I see them. Um, and here we have something that we can't actually interact with. Uh, that's basically a code of sorts. So um, at this point, you could take a picture or a screenshot because we'll be using that much later.
So while we're out here, we can take a little step off the beaten path. Um, you can go pretty much anywhere. And we are going to... Here's that tree branch that was looking through the window. There's a lot of these um, point of view and distance uh, things that the game does. So if we continue on to the ramparts, I guess, of this little castle, we can find a couple of audio logs. Someone was enjoying a little sun. So tucked under the pillow here, we will find another one. This one's actually unique. It's not attributed to anyone, the quote, and I don't know if it is made for the game or if it is a quote. If you know, let me know in the comments, but uh, here we go. Through many births, I have wandered on and on, searching for, but never finding, the builder of this house. Um, a little fun fact, that is the voice of Ashley Johnson, who is known for the Critical Role show on YouTube and uh, Twitch, but also more famously known as the voice of Ellie in The Last of Us. And if we head up here, there is another audio log right here. This one's a little bit of a longer one. I am standing on the threshold about to enter a room. It is a complicated business. In the first place, I must shove against an atmosphere pressing with a force of 14 pounds on every square inch of my body. I must make sure of landing on a plank, traveling at 20 miles a second around the sun. A fraction of a second too early or too late, the plank would be miles away. I must do this whilst hanging from a round planet head outward into space and with a wind of ether blowing at no one knows how many miles a second through every interstice of my body. The plank has no solidity of substance. To step on it is like stepping on a swarm of flies. Shall I not slip through? No. If I make the venture, one of the flies hits me and gives me a boost up again. I fall again and am knocked upwards by another fly, and so on. I may hope that the net result will be that I remain about steady, but if, unfortunately, I should slip through the floor or be boosted too violently up to the ceiling, the occurrence would be not a violation of the laws of nature, but a rare coincidence. These are some of the minor difficulties. I ought really to look at the problem four-dimensionally as concerning the intersection of my world line with that of the plank. Then again, it is necessary to determine in which direction the entropy of the world is increasing in order to make sure that my passage of the threshold is an entrance, not an exit. Verily, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a scientific man to pass through a door. And whether the door be barn door or church door, it might be wiser that he should consent to be an ordinary man and walk in, rather than wait till all the difficulties involved in a really scientific ingress are resolved. Arthur Eddington, 1927. Okay. So that's all that's up here on the ramparts. But if we continue around this way, we will find another path behind the castle. And here we will see that colored cable, which apparently opened up this gate for us. And here we have a puzzle with the black dots. So let's go ahead and collect those.
and in here we will find another audio dialogue. Of all the communities available to us, there is not one I would want to devote myself to, except for the Society of True Searchers, which has very few living members at any time. Albert Einstein, 1924. That is uh, Phil Lamar, um, a pretty prolific voice actor who you might also remember from Mad TV back in the day. Um, so littered around the world, we're going to find these little uh, panels that have been dismantled, I guess, and, and thrown on the ground. And these are important for a optional side area with diabolical puzzles later in the game, um, which we won't know how to solve unless we learn these rules on here. So... If we just head to the end here, we're going to find out that that works. Um, if we do it another way, we'll find out that it doesn't work. So let's try it this way. That also doesn't work. So it only works going this way. Um, and it may take a few of these littered around to learn um, what they do, but kind of my thought process was, well, I'm only passing by this square on one side with the triangle in it. But if I go this way, I'm passing it on two sides. And if I go this way, I'm passing it on two sides. So the triangle in the square could indicate you only pass by one side of it, but we don't necessarily know for now. So we're just gonna leave that one completed and move on. And here we have a harder version of the collect the dots. Mm -hmm. Making it difficult, huh? if we could go like this. There we go. Is that better? Sort of. Maybe the other direction. There we go. All right. And we're done with that little section. So if we continue following the path, we will find this area over here. mirrored puzzles. And that lowered this gate down, and we have a panel here that we can't interact with, so uh, we'll just leave that. No 
we have mirrored reversed. But again, the idea pretty much remains the same here. Starting to get a little tilted. This one's really weird. Alright, that has turned on something way over there. gate that's locked. So we can't solve this puzzle for now. So let's go ahead and uh, back up. Take a little stroll down here. And we'll take a little break and uh, listen to an audio log. If I could not auto select that. Oh my god. I'll just come back here. Here we go. Formerly, you appeared to me, O oh Lord, as invisible by every creature because you are a hidden, infinite God. Infinity, however, is incomprehensible by every means of comprehending. Later, you appeared to me as visible by all, for a thing exists only as you see it, and it would not actually exist unless it saw you, for your vision confers being since your vision is your essence. Thus, my God, you are equally invisible and visible. As you are, you are invisible, as the creature is, which exists only in so far as the creature sees you, you are visible. You, therefore, my invisible God, are seen by all, and in all sight you are seen by everyone who sees. You who are invisible, who are both absolute from everything visible and infinitely super exalted, are seen in every visible thing and in every act of vision. Therefore, I must leap across this wall of invisible vision to where you are to be found. But this wall is both everything and nothing. For you, who confront as if you were both all things and nothing at all, dwell inside that high wall which no natural ability can scale by its own power. Nicholas of Cusa, 1453. Okay. So as we continue exploring around here, we're going to find a lot of panels here that don't seem to be turned on, except this one here.
damn. So now that we got this activated, we can go ahead and finish these up here. All right, now we have different colored dots. So now we have to collect the blue dots with the blue line and the yellow dots with the red line. So we're always going to be the blue line. So that's going to determine where you start your... No? Why not? Oh, I see. Why? What did I do? Oh, shit. I have to start here. There we go. And the black dots can be collected by either line. That's what this has shown us. black one up here. Okay, let's try... Nope, can't do that. I have to be here. Okay, this one's kind of throwing me for a loop. This this right here is what's what's getting me. There we go. And then we got even more.
but you'll notice that something a little strange is happening to the yellow line. That's not going to help. Looks like it's starting to fade a little bit. start over here. Nope. There we go. So yeah, you basically just have to keep the yellow line reversed in your mind. So this time I'm only using the invisible line to collect the dots. So if I go here, the yellow line will collect the one at the top. And if I go down, and then two over, and then down again, I think that should be it. There we go. All right. So it looks like the gate has opened up for us, but if we head down one more level, before we uh, finish off this episode, there are some uh, optional puzzles to do. I'm just trying to remember how to get down there. There we go. So, so that doesn't work. So this one definitely took a little bit of a trial and error, but I mean, it, it should only take a minute. You kind of see these the image of the rocks behind are lined up in this puzzle. That is actually the solution. This is when I started going, oh my god, this game is something else. Uh, same thing here. We can't see it. It's blocked by the tree, but we do know that it comes down here, so it must be that high. Same thing with that.
So now that one doesn't work. Uh, what if we went like this? Nope, that one doesn't work. Uh, and this is where the game starts to teach you a little bit about, like anytime you walk up close to a puzzle and select it, it zooms in. But you can solve a puzzle from any distance. So if we rearrange the puzzle and then zoom in a little bit, we have that. And then finally we get to the one that uh, really threw me for a loop for a long time. I tried lining up these ones, but because that rock here um, in the f is like blocking the other one, I couldn't figure it out. You just turn it around and instead we're using the palm trees. Isn't that crazy? And there we go. What I love about this game is when you do these optional puzzles, there's no reward. There's nothing we get or open up by solving these. It's just a sense of accomplishment. Um, and they really went with that concept hard in this game to basically ex the exclusion of almost all um, achievements in this game. It didn't want you to have a trophy by solving something. The enjoyment should be enough. So th I think there are two trophies in this one, one for winning a really difficult time challenge puzzle, which I'm probably not gonna try, but maybe I will. Um, and then one that's just simply called, you beat the game. <laughs> I don't know if they were pressured, but you, could, you can tell that uh, they obviously were a little bit annoyed that they had to put even one in here. But uh, I find that funny. So yeah, this area here is explored. So now let's go ahead and... I was sorry. I was kind of looking for... I thought there was a second audio tape here, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so now this is open. And that's a simple one. Uh, apparently not. There we go. Ooh, actually there might be... Maybe I'm thinking of over here. There was another one over here. I wasn't silly. One nature, perfect and pervading, circulates in all natures. One reality, all comprehensive, contains within itself all realities. The one moon reflects itself wherever there is a sheet of water. And all the moons and the waters are embraced within the one moon. The absolute of all the Buddhas enters into my own being. And my own being is found in union with theirs. The inner light is beyond praise and blame. Like space, it knows no boundaries. Yet it is even here, within us, ever retaining its serenity and fullness. It is only when you hunt for it that you lose it. You cannot take hold of it, but equally you cannot get rid of it. And while you can do neither, it goes on its own way. You remain silent and it speaks. You speak and it is dumb. The great gate of charity is wide open with no obstacles before it. Young Cha Tashi, circa 700. Okay. I feel better knowing that that was there. So now we can go ahead and finish up with a series of puzzles here. So, don't know what's up with that one. But over here we can do it.
So yeah, it doesn't seem to be um, doing anything to the other screen, but let's go ahead and look at this screen. So, if you haven't already noticed, the theme of this game, or of, of this particular area, is um, reverse mirror and reflection. Um, which is why we've got a lot of, you know, reflective water around us and stuff. It's showing things from the sky. Um, so, knowing what we do on these three puzzles that we've solved them, we need to reflect that onto these other screens. So, let me get a look at these. And so, we started over here. We went up, and then this way. We went up. I think we went like this. Okay. And we went down and up. And obviously this is uh, a little bit of trial and error. Uh, I think we started on this side. And then gonna go this way oh maybe not maybe we went this way oops oops oh nope shut it off now I gotta redo this one I think this third one is not only mirrored, but reversed, which makes it even more difficult. Um, so we're going to start off on the right and go out one. Then we want to go down over here all the way to the other end. There we go. And then finally it unlocks this. Not done yet. So I shot a laser all the way to the top of that mountain. So I think this is a good place to go ahead and end this episode. Um, so basically the game is gently guiding us that maybe we should go ahead and explore the top of that mountain. And see what this just lit up um, and we're gonna go ahead and do just that uh, the next episode will be really really cool because we're gonna get that just huge light bulb moment about what this game is is really all about and everything and then that will uh, encourage us to go all the way back to the very beginning of the game and r really look at things close um, so I hope you'll join me uh, this is kind of a fun little experiment to see if uh, this type of thing is gonna work so uh, you know it'll help if you comment any questions like the video that would help very much uh, thank you and I'll see you next time peace out